I'm here again, Amin, and uh, besides me, myself, and I, I have the great Dave Rogers with me. How are you doing, Dave? Fantastic. Great to be here with you, Amin. Yeah. Okay, great. So, uh, I have a few questions. I'm, I'm, I'm curious about it. So, uh, there's a lot of things about entrepreneurship I wanted to ask. Fantastic. How do, you, how do you manage to become an entrepreneur in the first place? Okay, let's start you off by reframing your question. <sighs> okay, I'll You're do You're talking that. to the guy who doesn't really love that question. Yeah. The how yet? One of the ways you could ask is, Dave, tell me a little bit about your path to entrepreneurship. Uh huh. Okay. So again, you know, I'm I'm convinced that coaching is one of those skills that is is so useful, even in an interview process. Coaching for me has been the path for me to entrepreneurship. I was very interested in coaching, and particularly in my banking and my finance career. As a bond trader, I, I was curious about coaching. I went and studied from people like Kiyosaki and Robbins and, and a number of people all around the world that allowed me to really start to understand about coaching because self-coaching is something that's useful. In business, so to be able to coach people from an unresourceful state to a resourceful state is a skill that I've really loved doing and it got me involved in entrepreneurship because when I had the opportunity to be involved in businesses while I was working full-time I was able to bring a certain skill set with finance and with coaching that increased my value in the eyes of a number of entrepreneurs so while I was working full-time I was actually involved in a couple of ventures using those skills and then I decided during the 2000 to go into it full time. And since that time, I've been involved in probably about 20 different businesses. And not all of them have done well. In fact, if you look at statistics for entrepreneurs, probably 90 to 95% of the businesses do not survive a decade. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? So why do you think that? <laughs> why do businesses not yeah. uh, succeed? I think it, it really is a, many businesses are set up because people are, are seeking to make money. And so if you're purely seeking money, Often, if you get through in, into difficult times, you'll have a higher tendency to quit. If it's just purely money, and, and then it becomes really like a job. In fact, some people, it'd be better off just getting a job than running their own business. And so there is a, a, a learning curve, there, there is a, a skill set development that many entrepreneurs, that many sole proprietors have got to really work on so that they can develop the skills to allow the business to grow. And frankly, many people, don't do that well. They go and they think that entrepreneurship is going to be easy. They're going to have a lot more time. They want to do it on their own. And these are some of the fallacies of entrepreneurship. So there's many reasons why entrepreneurs or sole proprietors are not successful. The biggest thing though is that they're just not equipped to allow and be able to discern of what's important and what's not. So if if I were to start a business, basically from what you are saying that there are certain skills that's required, what would be the three biggest skills that... Well, the biggest one, I believe, is actually being able to be in a team. Oh. Again, the, the idea here is that it's going to really take two, three, four people with very different skill sets and very different perspectives to allow an enterprise to grow. And quite often, businesses will break up is because the original starting partners have fallouts. It could be fallouts during the good times, which is a surprise. Many businesses, when they come together, they are actually able to, to galvanize and fight through the tough times. Yet when they actually have the good times, that's when the ego might pop up. That's when people's ulterior motives might pop up. And that's often when companies do break apart, even after several years working together. Wow. So last but final question, oh. if there's any tips that you wanted to give to, give to the fellow Kickstarters, what would that be? Okay, well I guess the, the tip is that, that I love the idea of being in projects. So one of the great ways that if you're not 100% into entrepreneurship yet, get involved in some projects. Go and find ways that you can collaborate with people so you can go and, and have the experience of working together on a project, see if it can be pump profitable, and then you can really decide whether you have the, the value systems, the work ethics that can collaborate and can allow you to, uh, to build something that might be worthwhile. The idea for many of the things in startup that we're also sharing is to look to have a business that really allows your why to come out. Uh, people really are looking for a business with purpose and this is an area that will allow you to really be able to handle the difficult times because in entrepreneurship there's going to be difficult times. Right. And thank you very much Dave, bye bye. Thank you very much. Good to have you again in Kickstart, bye bye. And we'll see you again next time. Cheers. Cheers.